Welcome to Inside Out Boys with your host, Cody Bass. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the channel. Big hello to all you new subscribers. Thank you for joining us here. We have a lot of outboard fun on this here channel. Sure do. Um, so we're going to get back on the building of a 2530 Johnny Root. And I decided I'm going to do a little bit of different stuff on the cosmetics on this one. Just cuz. Just cuz. But, before we get back into it, I want to do answer a question that I get a lot. Now, I don't know the whole answer, but I'm going to give you at least two. The question is, these brackets that hold the starter onto the power head of these 18 through 35s. Evan Rude Johnson. Um, what is the part number? A lot of people inquire about. And this bracket, I'm letting the float plane go by. This bracket that I can see is identical in every way that I can see to this bracket. Let me put that down. They are the same as far as I can tell. But they have different part numbers. Here's the one with the starter bolted on, and here's the bracket. They look the same in every aspect that I can see. But they have different part numbers. So, and I, I'm, I'm guessing you could even find more part numbers depending on the year and the horsepower. Why OMC does it that way, I don't know. But those brackets, I've had this bracket right here on two or three different engines, horsepowers, and year models, and it fits fine for any of the, like I said, 18 through 35 horsepowers. And this one here, the part number is the top number. You can pause it, do whatever you want. That's This bracket is the top part number. The one with the starter on it is the bottom part number. Like I said, different part numbers, but they look identical to me, and either will work. And I'm sure there are more, but that's at least two part numbers that will work. So you can pause it, do whatever you need to do. That is two part numbers for these brackets. And like I said, if they look like this, they will bolt on just fine. You got your place for your solenoid. You got your bolt hole that's going to go in front on the power head. And then you've got a bolt hole here that's going to go on the side of the power head and here. And the starter bolts right here. So I just wanted to go over that because I get that, uh, I get inquiries about that all the time. What is the part number? Um, so there's a couple. I finally got that propeller off the shaft, off the prop shaft of the lower unit I want to use on this Johnny Rude. And we're going to get some cleaning up and some cosmetic stuff done to that and get the lower unit on there and hopefully get the starter on there and get ready to button this thing oh we got to do the tiller 
yet. I gotta get, I gotta go over there and get that out the bone pile. I've uh, went out in the bone pile and got a couple of different propeller options. And uh, so, I say, let's get to it.
Yeah, Fred's an old blues man I ain't no one can guess the weather Like old where the frog Fred can He sits out on his log Old Fred, the weather frog Now Fred, he can tell you a joke No Fred, come put you down But old Fred knows, he sure does When that old bad weather coming round Old Fred is a blues man, sitting on the lawn Sitting on a log I say Fred is a blues man Oh, blues bullfrog Fred will make you feel good Fred can make you mad Fred can cheer you up This old frog can make you sad I say Fred is a blues just a sitting on a step. I said, Fred is a blues man. Just a sitting on a step. Oh, he knows the answers to your problems. He just ain't thought of it yet. Slowly going up in there. It's this front bolt right here. I forgot to clean that up and grease it up real good. But she's there now.
have the tiller hooked up. Um, now it's time to get the tiller and the uh, electric start on there. This is the tiller handle I want to use. It's the one that fits it, but uh, the cable's too short. So I went over into the bone pile and got this one. And these are too thick here for this model. I could grind it down or whatever, but I'm not gonna, because um, this is a nice unit. But I am gonna take the cable off this one, which is longer and about what I need so that's what we got to get it doing you loosen this end cap here and then I just took a Phillips screwdriver pushed in that tab and then took a screwdriver and got in between here and pushed it forward and once you get that tab under there a little bit you do the same on the other side and then it'll pull off and there's your helix and your little pieces, your rollers, your sliders, slider shaft, other slider, the other roller must be stuck in the helix or it's just missing because it it ain't in the helix. There it is. Yeah, it was. All right. So that's all that. Come back. Yeah. There. And now I got to take off this little thing. Yeah, that sounds a lot easier. I'll be back. Now, once you uh, get this off where you can get up under there, and as you can see, all three of those little screws broke right off, which is kind of normal in a salt water. Then you've got this little clip here, right there, there. And them things can be a burger, booger. The best way I found is take a pointed, an old screwdriver and sharpen it to a point ish and then just push up under that from this way going toward the the actual front of the tiller push that under there get it under there real good and then just ease that thing up and that's what it looks like little I don't know what is that kind of horseshoey looking thing and you can reuse that you might have to bend it you know back in a little bit of shape from prying it out of there but that's really all there is to the thing it's just a little clip and don't lose it all right we're getting there now you've got How did that get back on there? How many crickets? Now you've got to gently, and I mean gently, this is CPS stuff here you're dealing with. So, and it will break right there a, a, a lot of times. Mm -hmm. 
and you've got this plastic housing that it goes in there so you just kind of pop it up and jiggle and wiggle be careful and there's my cable um, the other one's got a kill switch man overboard switch out on the very tip this one was on off to the side so I'm going to use the one that's already in that handle there. So now we got to get this other one apart and get that cable out. Same process, nothing different. Like I said, undo this so that the this piece can slide that way. And you'll feel it when it's no longer threaded in there. Take a Phillips screwdriver, kind of a blunt one, push down on that tab, take your flat screwdriver, come up under there, and gently press it forward just enough to catch that rubber tab. I don't know if you can see it, but the rubber tab is pushed in now. The rubber ear is pushed in. And then I'll do the same thing I just did that to the other side. Push it in with the Phillips. Get your... And that should be all you need to get it off. There it is. And try not to lose all your parts. I dropped the slider. There's a slider. There's a roller. There's a roller. There's a slider. There's a slider shaft. And same process with the little keeper. Pull it out. Try not to lose it. <laughs> That's the hard part. Try not to lose it. That applies to many aspects of life. Try not to lose it. I'm not to get these wires. I just want that switch out of there. Hey, look at there. So now I got that switch that I'm not going to use. Okay. Okay. And then we got to get this cable back in there. Which... Good slide right back in there. Which went in a little crooked. See if I can push it down with my screwdriver. I don't know. I don't know. Apparently not. Maybe if I flip it around the other way, it'll go in better. I don't know. It wants to twist on me when it gets, see, like that. There we go. There we go. Now you take your little clip. And like I said, you might have to bend this a little bit better, you know, after you pried it out. About like that. Dab it that in there. Right in there where it goes. I'm trying. I'm trying. I need some needle. Let me get me some needle nose. I needed a needle nose and some a rag get all this grease off me. The grease. Yeah, this should make this a little bit easier. There. Got one side in. And got the other side in. 
and push this one. There. Whoa! Did you see that recovery of that screwdriver? Or punch, whatever you want to call this thing? There. And that's what the little wire clip will look like when you get that in. I don't know. I don't know if you can see it. I'm trying. I'm trying. I'm trying. Okay. Now, I don't know if I'll bother running them wires. They already got some chafing stuff here, so I'll probably just slide that back up on there like that, tape them or zip tie it to them. You know, you know. Now, these little goobers, take your punch, pull that slider cable end piece right about there to the middle. And you'll have to mess with it until you get the slider shaft in. Then you put a slider. The slider is the one that don't look like the roller. It looks like that. It slides in this groove here. Okay, now a roller goes right there. And there's normally enough grease. If yours needs some grease, put a little grease there to hold that for you. Okay, do the same thing on the other side. Slider. Roller. And of course the other roller fell appropriately off. Now, take your helix. Now, why are you being a why are you being a pickle? Okay. And you can see this right here. There's a groove in the helix for that. So you got to make sure that you're in that groove and that your roller is far enough forward or just keep turning it until the roller goes in that slot that ditch right there okay get rid of the bug always get rid of the bug that stuck to the grease I don't think it'd make a difference again there's that there it is now if you watch the end of the cable as I turn it as I say I turn it the cable goes in and out. So now we just take our rubber dealy. I think it was this one I took off of here. Nope, it was this one. Yep. And line up the little ears. There's your ears, one here, one over there. Line them up. Once you get it on there a little bit, it'll hold the helix in place for you. And mash it all down. Here. Didn't make it that time. Keep going. Hey. And there's my little ears. They're in there now. And our cable works nice and good and loosey goosey. So Now we got a long cable that will work on our outboard. Now, I popped this thing back apart because I knew once I did this, you wouldn't be able to see anything. Okay, now before I go back up with it, I like to take the Lubri Plate 105 and put in schmither, slather, I don't know if them are words, but I slather it. All right, put it in there and don't, don't worry about overdoing it. So that process I just showed you, 
and that, then do the same thing, line everything up, put it all back. That way, you know you're, you're gonna be good, all lubed up. Cause, and I like the Lube, Lubri Plate 105 for this. It uh, makes it good and smooth. Alrighty, we got the tiller on there. I had to do a little modification. Um, this one fit on there, but I had to drill a hole right down here and run it through there so I could bend the cable and snake it around here to where it goes, and I'll show you that in a second. But it's nice and smooth. And I had to take off this shifter and because I want to paint this front part, it was all scaly in here. When I drilled that hole, I saw some white powder. This, what you're seeing here is anti-seize, anti-grease. Um, so it, I'm gonna tighten that up yet a little bit. Um, but yeah, I had to snake the cable around through here because where we're going with it is here. Once I put the starter bracket on it, um, it'll go here. Well, the cable will come through here and hook to the bottom here. I got to go uh, in my bone pile and get one of those. There's a little clip that goes here that snaps onto a round ball. I mean, there's many ways you could do it, but that's what I'm going to put there. So we've got that and... If you look right in there, right here you can see the cable, and that's nice and loosey-goosey. And it will go right here, and then the little keepers will be on the starter bracket that hold this, and that all... I know it doesn't look like it would fit. This is my kill wires and so forth. It doesn't look like it would fit right there, that whole starter bracket. You know, you would think this is going to be in the way and all, but it, it will fit. It just, the way they've got the solenoid mounted coming in from this way, well, you'll see it all, but uh, it does fit. Um, I've done it a number of times, and it will fit in there. Barely, but it will fit. So that's why if you've got any old garbage raider work you've got to do on one of these, you're going to have to remove that starter to get to that nut. Right there. That's the one. That's the culprit. That one. That one, and then this. This is bossed and threaded right here. When you put this starter and all in there, you got to come from the back side going that way. And that's a tough little bolt to get at. And here's where the other starter bolt goes, and there'll be a lock washer, or, or a lock washer and a 7 16 nut, or a 7 16 nylock is even better. Um, and then the other one goes here. So we're getting real close, real close. But I got to source a couple of other parts. I got a little more cosmetic stuff to do and we'll get there. I got a drinking problem. Um, well, I think that's gonna be kind of a wrap on this one at this point here um, because I washed it off with a little bit of the garden hose to get some of the drill shavings off the front of it and stuff where I drilled the holes and but we're moving right along with this Johnson 2530 Evan Rude Johnny Rude Evan Johnny and that won't work that don't work Evan Johnny Rude John Ev John Johnny Rude the other way, it don't work the other, it, 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 only, it only works that way. But it uh, looks like there's going to be a part three because I still got a little bit of cosmetics, but we're getting that close to hooking up the starter. And I got the tiller on there. I still got to go to the old bone pile and get a couple little clippy things. And I got to get the shift handle back on after I paint the little front area there because I want that to look nice. But it's looking pretty nice. It's looking pretty good. 
it's almost becoming a QT. But, uh, so we know it runs and this and that and that and this. And it's beautiful out. And I got a few other things I need to tend to, like lawn mowers and such. So I need to get it that. And uh, still got to pay them bills and that rents. Got to pay them rents. So I got to get doing that. Um, but we'll keep going on this, and then the next one I got coming in, it's already here. It is a little cutie for sure. And I'll show you that one, that'll be coming up. But we gotta finish up this Johnny Root. So that's the next step, so I can get it out there for sale for somebody to have a good, nice running working motor for them. Get it to work. So, um, it is the season, so make sure you get that young person, them little peoples, out there for some boating. And by all means, let them drive. It's important. Get them out there. Let them become the captain. Let them drive. So, it's late. That's going to be a wrap on this one. And as always, that is one more hack from Kodiak. Thanks for watching. More vids are coming on Inside Outboards with your host, Cody Bass.